Hi, my name is Bruce Zippel and I'm the current Chair of Oysters Australia. I'm also an oyster grower farming on the west coast of South Australia in Smoky Bay and we also have farms at St Peter's Island. I'm also, I'm also a member of our family operating business or family farming business with my two brothers and we suffer the same ups and downs as everyone else in the oyster industry throughout Australia and we know there are some challenging times about at the moment. Fellow growers would know of the development of Oysters Australia, which is now the research and development and advocacy arm of the Australian industry, and it was formed by New South Wales, South Australia and Tasmania in 2011. Oysters Australia was a massive leap forward for the industry in 2000, 2011, but we've taken another big leap since October, signing an FRDC industry partnership agreement. This is actually very monumental as it means that the oyster industry, i.e. you, the growers, through your representatives, decides on how it invests its R&D money rather than through cross-sector advisory groups. The dollar goes to the oyster industry. And as a safeguard, we are also about to sign off on a strategic plan, steering our investment and setting our goals for the next five years. A hundred growers across all states gave their opinion on how they wanted to see the money spent and the plan was the result. Thank you for your support and we look forward to representing your interests into the future. The New South Wales Department of Primary Industries Biosecurity and Fisheries Experts are continuing to investigate mortalities in farm Pacific oysters in the Port Stephens estuary. Significant efforts are being made by animal health professionals at the department's Elizabeth MacArthur Agricultural Institute to continue to exclude POMS or Pacific Oyster Mortality Syndrome as a cause of the mortalities from over 54 laboratory submissions. From submissions to date, there's been no evidence found of the involvement of any single infectious or transmissible agent. The department is continuing to investigate and a transmission trial will be conducted during February to March 2014. The aim of this trial is to determine whether there is any likelihood of a transmissible agent being involved in the mortalities. Results to date suggest that many factors may be involved in causing the mortalities, including perhaps environmental stresses. The department will continue to work closely with affected farmers and communicate findings to the New South Wales oyster industry. Late last year we ran a field challenge in the Georges River with YC12 spat. In this trial we had mortality rates ranging from 20 to 80 percent which means that we get really good genetic information. In the hatchery we've just completed producing 80 families for the upcoming POMS trials. These are from our second generation of POMS families and the results will be worth watching for. Field challenges can be difficult so a critical part of our project is the development of a lab based trial. Researchers at EMAI are having success in this area and have recently been able to infect oysters with stored virus. Finally, you may have heard of the syndrome which is causing mortalities in Port Stephens. We use this site as a holding area for our oysters on the way to the Georges River and we're currently looking at risk mitigation measures for our project. If you require any further information, please feel free to contact me. Richard Barry, farming on the Nambucca River. About a year, 12 months without a flood, long may it continue, and now a little drop of rain. Norovirus may well be found in every estuary, so it's good to see funding has been found to test and hopefully establish a background level that is not a public health issue and which can facilitate earlier opening of an estuary should an outbreak occur. In the Northern Hemisphere, virus levels are far higher and establishing Australian levels would avoid imposition of their proposed extremely stringent protocols on our industry. Thanks.